Ali Hadawira. Ako je Mr. Speaker, kjer je tato katoj te fari? Mr. Speaker, apparently this bill is about establishing procedures to protect investments in aviation and cover the financing and purchasing and leasing of aircraft, but it also gives the Minister extra powers in the making of civil aviation rules, and that raises a couple of points that I'd like to speak to here. The first is the Manukau claim. Now, when the Waitangi Tribunal first heard this claim in the 80s, they brought to the table the Auckland Regional Authority and the Civil Aviation Division of the Ministry of Transport to question them about the site that they chosen and the site that they used. It was noted back then that when Cabinet made the land available in 1955, there had been no acknowledgement of either Māori land title or the need to protect Māori land interests. Auckland Airport sits on 1,300 hectares, including reclaimed land that had once been a local iwi fishing bank and which was the basis of the Manuko claim. And expanding airport operations have led to even greater restrictions on other fishing banks and creeks traditionally fished by local Māori. And also the release of excessive levels of pollution from stormwater discharge, aviation fuel spills and industrial chemicals and fluids. In summing up the Manukau claim, the Waitangi Tribunal had some harsh words for the Crown regarding the pollution of the harbour and the loss of lands to Tangata Whenua, and I quote, Underlying this claim is an enormous sense of grievance, injustice and outrage that continues to haunt the Manuko Māori and bedevil the prospect of harmony in Greater Auckland. And yet for all the laying down of rules of engagement between Māori and the Crown, in that case, the exact same problem occurred when a local marae raised their own long-standing claim to land and airspace around Rotorua Airport. Back in the 60s, local authorities in Rotorua had actually decided to bulldoze the whare tūpuna of the Ngāti Uenuku Kōpako people because it was in the flight path. Dewi, of course, refused. Fifty years on, the airport authority builds a new $24 million dollar extension to the runway and again, to nobody's surprise, has no regard whatsoever to the impact on the marae, the kohanga reo or the iwi itself. Mr Speaker, the Māori Party will be supporting all stages of this bill, but the examples I've cited here raise the question again as to when it is appropriate to amend legislation to take into account the circumstances of iwi and gives us the opportunity to remind the House again of the importance of recognising Māori interests in policy, planning and legislation. Kia ora tata. Members, the question is that the motion be agreed to. Those of that opinion will say aye. 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 The contrary opinion will say no. The ayes have it. Civil Aviation, Cape Town Convention and Other Matters Amendment Bill, first reading. Members, this bill is set down for second reading forthwith. I call Honourable Kate Wilkins.